All right, I'm here tonight to demonstrate how we would go about setting up communion for a Sunday morning. I'm going to set the table up as it would appear for Sunday morning. The only thing that will be missing is the cups won't be filled and the bread won't be in its place. It'll just look like everything's ready. Uh, I'll have to show you in a separate video uh, how we might do that. Okay, lay the four trays out for, to fill them. The plastic cups you'll find in the cabinet where we had the communion elements. Open the plastic bag and fill the communion. Try to uh, fill an even number around. I usually put about a, at least 100, possibly 120, just to be sure that nobody runs out of cups uh, while they're serving. After the cups are filled, after the trays are filled with cups, you can get the juice holder over here. Make sure that it's clean. Should have been clean before it was put away. Pour the grape juice into here. And with a gentle squeeze, just fill each cup up. Don't fill it up to the top. You want it about a quarter of an inch down so that you don't spill. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the pulpit Bible here. I'll be carrying this to the back, to the choir room in the back, to leave it there until after the service. This cloth is held in place by a piece of Velcro that you'll find across the back of the table so that when you do replace it, you'll be able to replace it at the correct place. I'm going to take this and put it back in the choir room. Okay. While I was back in the choir room, I acquired this cloth, which is in the closet, hanging on a hanger in the back. This goes on first. You want to be sure that it's straight and not crooked. Step back, make sure that the cross is in the center. Here, and the lectern on the right hand pedestal on the right hand upright to unlock the cabinet that holds the communion elements. Unlock the cabinet. On the left hand door there's a latch you have to pull down from the top. First, before you put anything up, you need to put down the plastic cover to guard against spilling the grape juice on the communion tablecloth because the juice does stain rather badly. And I noticed that there are a few stains on the tablecloth now. must have made a real plastic cloth because this is a sign of the orange. 
Then place the cross in the middle. The communion cup holders, one on the right with the cross in the right position. With both of those in position, the next thing you want to do is place the red plates. There's four of them. Just place them evenly. At some time, be some at some point before the service, you will have filled the cups that are inside. Go inside. There's two, uh, two trays on either side, and you'll have filled the, uh, the bread plates with the bread that you have cut up, probably at home. Put one of the doilies down first. Usually what we do is uh, put the bread after you've cut it up in plastic bags and as near to the service as possible, near to the time of the service as possible, empty the plastic bags onto the doily and cover it up with the napkin. The later you can do that, the fresher the bread will seem to the congregation. Oftentimes there'll be some comments about the bread being stale if you do it too soon. The doilies and the napkins you'll find in this box, which also has a diagram on it of how the table gets set up. Close the cabinet, doors up, lock them so that they stay closed and don't come open during the service. Place the key back over under the electric. You'll find a nail to hang it on there. That's the way communion will look like on Sunday morning. The only thing we have to do sometime previous to the service, like I said, is fill the cups, place the cups in their place, fill them, and have the bread ready. At the end of the service, the hymn of preparation is announced and played. Uh, usually in the first verse or two, I would make my way behind the communion table, and the deacons who are present would make their way back to the rear of the sanctuary. The deacons in front will end up beside me to my right and left behind the communion table, and they will be responsible for the prayers for the cup and for the bread, the deacons at the rear will be on the outside of the bench and they will uh, only be doing the serving. During the final verse of our hymn of preparation, the deacons would then make their way forward to the front of the sanctuary. Him ends, and I ask the congregation to be seated as our deacons receive the fellowship offering, which is distributed to situations of need within the community. The deacons on the ends proceed to the rear of the sanctuary 
and begin working forward from the back, the inside deacons uh, will receive the offering from the choir. And then they in turn will go to the front of the sanctuary and begin uh, waiting upon the people and uh, moving back from the front. The offering plates are placed on the, uh, on the shelf behind. The deacons are seated. I stand to offer the words of institution, usually 1 Corinthians uh, 11 or other appropriate scripture passages. Um, and then when I am done, I would turn to the deacon on my right and ask for the prayer of thanksgiving for the bread. The prayer being finished, we would all stand together. The coverings are removed. The bread is passed, the plate is passed to the inside deacon who then passes it on to the end of the line. I am seated and then served by the same deacon who offered the prayer of thanksgiving. And then the deacons serve the choir, the organist, and the congregation. As they reach the steps, I stand. And the plates are returned. The deacons are seated and served. final statement is given to the effect of this is indeed the body of Christ. Let us take, eat, and remember him. I would then call upon the deacon to my left for the prayer of thanksgiving for the cup.
When all have been served, the deacons proceed down the aisle as a unit. I stand as they reach the stairs, and then the trays are replaced. Jesus said, this is the new covenant in my blood. Drink ye all of it. And singing a hymn, they went out. And it is the custom of our church to join hands in the center aisle and sing together, blessed be the tie that binds.